Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. Before I begin with this video, I just noticed on my Pro 1000 yet another one of my remaining tanks that has not been disabled. That is the chip is still semi-active. It could be low, it could be empty. I don't remember, but it's giving me a support code 1753. And we spoke about that earlier. That means that finally, finally, the printer has given up on me saying for instance hey Jose we have given you plenty of time to change that cartridge you should have used every single drop of ink that was remaining in that cartridge it's now time to replace it or disable it and if you disable it you are on your own so we're gonna go ahead and do that because I know very well that I have a lot of ink in my cartridges and I also have that ink level sensor system installed anyway Let's bring the camera over here and we'll show you the procedure that you must undergo to do the final disabling of the chip. All right, so I hope you can see clearly what's going on here. So the PBK or Photo Black has a problem. The remaining level of the ink cannot be correctly detected. Replace the ink tank. This is what you will see after a while of printing whether you have refilled your cartridge after it went empty on you or you refilled it while it was low and it seemed like it could go on forever that way no it cannot eventually you will receive this error so it doesn't tell you what to do but we know what to do we're going to go ahead and press the stop button and that's the one located directly below the power button we're going to hold it for five seconds you we will see a change on your screen it'll say something like processing zero one two three four five processing please wait and now see I had originally called for a nozzle check to be performed and apparently right after that nozzle check it declared that tank fully 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 empty let's go ahead and hit OK we're going to go ahead and run a nozzle check anyway, just for fun. It's been a couple of days since I ran it. Then I'll show you what that screen will now display. How it will display photo black. It will display it as a full bar of color. On your computer screen, it will not be displayed that way. It will be displayed completely blank. It'll just say photo black. So let's give it a while. It's going to take a while because it's got to do its cleaning and all of that. We'll come back when it is done and I'll show you what the nozzle check looks like. As you can see, it did not really take a long time to perform that because just the other day I ran an also check I didn't really cut away anything I just moved the camera back a little bit so you can see the nozzle check emerging if you guys recall I had a blank matte black channel just the other day and that was caused by basically my fault not using the matte black ink at all I've been printing on nothing but glossy paper or luster paper and so therefore my matte black channel was simply not being used for months I was using Q image to run a purge sheet but I forgot to set the settings to also include matte media so I was only utilizing photo black all right let's go ahead and take a quick look and then we'll begin with the subject of this um, video let me see so you can see everything especially this one here everything has printed correctly and so we are good to go all right okay nozzle is not clogged and does not require cleaning back and now my PBK is got a full bar isn't that something it almost looks like the printer now is completely chipless I have a couple more to go I have the Photo Magenta, the Cyan, 
and the photo grain to go and my photo cyan is still declared low. So the rest of the colors, red, matte black, photo black, blue, chrome optimizer, gray, yellow and magenta have all been disabled at this point. I'll give you a quick look right now. This is all live folks, so you can see photo magenta it still has a red X. That means it's still empty, so-called empty. Red is disabled. Cyan is still empty. Photo gray is still empty and the photo cyan is still low. Eventually they will become fully empty as declared by the printer. By the way, that new notice, your ink is running low. Yeah. And I do not want to update to my newest firmware at all. Alright, let's zoom back. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed that little uh, spontaneous little demonstration. I really did not know that I had thrown that particular channel as totally undetectable. And so yeah, the disabling of the chip is very simple. Just press the stop button, five seconds, it will go into a processing mode and that's it. From that point on, you are on your own. You have to make sure your cartridges always have ink in them. Unless you have the ink level sensor system, you really do not know unless you're constantly weighing your cartridges for the possibility that you're getting low. Empty is 32 grams, full is 112. So make sure you catch everything before it reaches that dangerous point because you do not want air to enter your ink system. All right, let's talk about something that was been discussed um, recently, and that is fading. Fading of, um, and they were using PC ink as the basic example of ink. And I had to interfere, not because I favor PC, not because I have a working relationship with them, but because it really doesn't matter, it's irrelevant. PC, Ink Owl, Ink Republic, I don't care who, whose dye ink it is, because we were talking about the Pro 100. I don't care whose dye ink it is, all dye third party inks will fade. They will fade at least 10 times faster than the equivalent OEM ink for the Pro 100. And even that has been uh, sort of downgraded by Canon lately. Okay. They have come out and said that no, it's not the 100 plus anymore. It's down to about a third. And we're going to discuss basically some of the factors that will contribute to fading and why you should not be making comparison you know, solely on PC because, again, in the United States, we have two labs. In fact, it's one lab inside the other lab, Image Specialist and STS. They are the ones that make just about every dye ink sold in America by any of the high-end resellers, such as Precision Colors, Ink Color, Ink Republic, and many others. So, the source is identical. Now, the basic media, we're talking about formulation, and everybody will say, oh, well, you know, PC has to have their own individual formulation. No, not really. The basic ink liquid, if you want to call it the clear base, is about the same. It's glycol based. You can look up the formulas out there. They're, they're, they're available. Uh, basically, all you change is the viscosity of that particular liquid to match what the head, the print head requires. Okay? And different printers require different levels of viscosity. So, What's the only other difference? The dyes. The dyes that they are using are not the same quality as the dyes that Canon, for instance, would ask their laboratory, whoever they contract, to create, say, Pro 100 inks. Canon will tell them, use the best dyes available. And these are all going to be synthetic dyes. These are all going to be very long-lasting dyes. They're going to be very low susceptibility to ozone oxidation and so forth. But they're costly. So third-party companies, sure, they can access those special dyes as well. But that would cause their product to be much more expensive. And you, the person who's trying to save money, may not want to go that route. 
hey, if I'm going to spend that much, heck, I might as well go with OEM at that point. Well, since we know that these inks are going to fade a lot quicker under the same exact conditions than an equivalent OEM print, then we have to make a decision. What do we favor? In the case of all of the other brands of third-party inks for the Pro 100, when you buy those, you're getting the standard kit that the lab, one of those two labs, produced. There's no tweaking unless the seller wants to specifically ask for a specific blend that they know through months and months and months of testing produces a very close match to OEM. Guess who did that? Precision Colors did that. That's why PC42 SE is so darn good because he spent over nine months blending and testing. Finally, he got the proportions right. And by that, I mean that the magenta ink, the color of magenta ink is not what optical magenta looks like. The color of yellow ink is not what yellow optical looks like and vice versa. Yes, it's confusing. They actually do not match. When you print on a rip and you're not actually compositing and blending and using a print engine, you're getting magenta bars that look more like red. You're getting red bars that look more like orange. You're getting, yeah, none of the colors really look the way you expect them to look. When you print a profile chart, that's what you do. You do not use color management on the application you use to open those charts with, and you do not use color management on the printer driver. So you get this raw rendition of all of these color bars. And then the software for the profile creates this formula, this orchestration, if you will, a symphony. How to mix those colors that don't match magenta, yellow, cyan, as we know them to be optically, so that on paper they appeared accurate. All right, so PC has blended slightly this way, that way. All the colors have been reblended. There is not one that has not been tampered with, if you will. And then they gave that formulation to that lab, and the lab did a mass production of that ink. No one else has that formulation. Only Precision Colors does. So, what's the point? Well, you get better than OEM rendition on a Pro 100. The Pro 100 OEM inks had suffered in that it could not reproduce a true red. It always looked a little bit orange and then it would just go to slightly pink or magenta. Okay, So by readjusting the individual dyes, he managed to exceed what the OEM rendition of red was. And also cyan. Anything that contains cyan was also improved. Now, out comes the Pro 200. And guess what their claim is? We now have accurate reds and we now have accurate cyans. And they also increase the quality even more. PC has not been able to surpass that. There's a limitation of what you can do. But the Pro 100, if you still have one, by golly, you can duplicate the results practically identical to the Pro 200 with simply a Pro 100 with PCSE inks. If you use only OEM, yeah, you will get this advantage, longevity. The third-party inks do not have that. They cannot promise you longevity. But there's a lot of ways to skin a cat, folks. Eventually everything fades, including OEM, simply by applying certain post-print applications of a protectant spray, Another option is to frame your best prints under glass and just about any frame will do that. You don't have to really buy UV glass which is very costly. At that point you might as well print OEM. Okay, So yeah, there are ways to circumvent the fading. Papers, paper types also have a huge, a huge effect on how long a print made with dye inks will last. Your environment, a huge factor as well. If you live in an industrial city, there's a lot of ozone in the air. Yeah, they will last maybe one-tenth of what they normally would last in the middle of Wyoming. You see what I'm getting at? So, 
it's not just about the inks, it's not just about the papers, but also about your environmental conditions. I don't know whether humidity is a factor. I haven't really explored that aspect yet. But I did, a couple of years ago, I did a one-year exposure to an east window. Basically what I did was I printed on the Pro 100 with OEM inks, with PC inks, and then I stored one of those control prints in dark storage simply inside a book and I put that in a box. So I sealed it against air exposure, I sealed it against light. That sat there for a year. The other few prints were printed also on Canon matte paper and also on Canon luster paper. One set of either one was sprayed with a Moab Desert Varnish protectant spray and the other pair was not sprayed. And then I also put an OEM print as well. So I had this array on my wall. My wife was not very happy with that for a whole year. Finally took it down. I took it down a little bit prematurely because again she was getting on my case. So what happened? The OEM did fade a little bit. How do I know that? Because I compared it to my one that was stored in the dark and then I also printed another one, a fresh print, and I used that as a, as a comparison, a control. And yeah, the OEM faded a little bit. How much? I did not measure it. Just looking at it visually, it faded a little bit. The ones that were not protected faded a lot more. The ones that were sprayed did not fade at all. At all. Okay? So there you go. Even the unprotected OEM one faded but the ones that were printed on PC inks and protected did not fade. So as simple as a code of a UV protectant spray will increase your longevity pretty much exponentially. Now paper, paper type, RC papers resin coated with lots of OBAs, optical brightening agents, they will fade a lot quicker than say a very fine grade fine art rag, no OBAs, Arita type paper. Maybe tenfold difference without any extra protection. Same inks. The paper is a huge factor as well. So keep that in mind. Stop comparing, you know, PC inks when the other ones have the same formulation. It's just the color blending is different. Color blending has nothing to do with longevity factors. Color blending only gives that particular ink set the properties where it will either match OEM or slightly even increase or exceed it, the quality of your output. So yeah, just remember that. It's not a case of a PC having a completely different formulation. They do not. It's, they're pretty much universal like the rest of the inks are. The only inks I would, I would caution you never to use are these ones that you see on eBay being sold by the quart, by the liter, by the gallon dye inks, even pigment, so-called pigment inks, and really they have very little pigment. They'll be like 90% ink with a little bit of pigment to kind of give it that sort of opaque look when you look at it in the bottle. But they're really, really super low quality products. Only buy products that are proven made in the USA or in the UK or in Germany. Okay, anything else is going to be garbage. Don't be fooled by the prices, by the great prices. All right, in the next video, I'm going to show you a few prints. So hang in there. We'll be back. Happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.